Welcome to the lesson on 11.2, Simplifying Radical Expressions. The key question here is, how can you simplify expressions containing rational exponents or radicals involving nth roots? Okay, before we do that, we need to go back to our memory lane and remember the things we've done in the past, right? So let's establish the properties of the rational exponents by using specific examples, right? What is 2 thirds times 2 squared? If you go back and think about the definition of 2 to the third, it's 3 copies of 2 multiplying. And 2 squared is 2 copies, which means that there are 3 and 2 copies, which gives you a total of 5 copies. So 2 to the third times 2 squared is 2 to the fifth. So you don't have to write these processes. Uh, this is what you could do. Uh, I'm okay with you skipping this middle step over here, but that's the idea behind it in red. Okay, what's in blue is sort of like a quasi proof. How about two squared cubed? Right here. So that means you got three copies of two squares. But I'm not going to write this out though, but you got this one has two copies of two, this one has two copies, this one has two copies. You got three, two copies. In other words, you got a total of six, like two threes, right? Or three twos, I'm sorry. So the way you write that is when you have two squared raised to the power of three, it's just two times three. Okay, you just multiply. In the next one, you got three copies of this, but the idea behind this is that you could collect a numerator and denominator separately. If you did that, it would be two cubed divided by x cubed. So the idea behind this is that when you have 2 over x quantity cubed, you could distribute that cube to both the numerator and the denominator, right? Now, that's a quotient, right, to the power. This is a product to the power. What happens over there? Well, as you could tell, that has two copies of 4x. But because the multiplication is commutative, you could rearrange that to 4 times 4 times x times x. Using the definition, 4 times 4 is 4 squared, x times x is x squared. So in short, when you square the product, is a product of squares. So you could distribute the exponent to individual bases, right? Uh, now the last one, we're going backwards, right? No, we're not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this one is actually kind of uh, piggy's back on the first one over here, right? So that was a multiplying two uh, exponents. What happens when you divide them? Well, the top one, there are five copies. The bottom one has three copies, right? This is two to the fifth divided by two to the third. But notice that there are three twos that cancel, and you uh, are remaining with two. So th in this case, it's two squared. The bottom line? The small number subtracted from the bigger number because small number cancels the number of bases that we have in the bigger number, right? Right. I, I hope that made sense. Uh, we'll talk more about in class, okay? So when you're dividing uh, the bases, we subtract the exponent. But it's actually easier for you to in, uh, sort of visualize what's happening like this in the blue, okay? All right. Let's formally write the, uh, the properties down. Uh, you've seen this before uh, in previous classes, so I'm just going like, to show you each one. The first one we did, uh, it's a product of power properties. We add quotient of power properties. That's the last one that we did, right? So we subtract. And here, you have power of power, we just multiply. Whether it be product or quotient, uh, we distribute the bases to both bases, right? All right, guys. Uh, if you need more time, please pause the video, but I'm moving to the next slide. All right, we, uh, we're only going to do two examples uh, through the video. The rest we'll do in class. Okay, the first one. Um, this one has the same base, doesn't it? 16 and 16. Uh, so instead of having a nice integer, we have a fraction. But it behaves the same way. You get the same rule, right? So what that means is that it's 16 
base of 16 raised to the power, uh, you add the, remember the rule? We add the exponents because that's the rule, right? So when you add 2 thirds and 4 thirds, you end up with 6 thirds, which is 6 over 3 is 2. So we're asking you to evaluate 16 squared. Yes, this weird looking expression actually ends up being 16 squared. Uh, when you multiply that out, it's 256. Now for the second one, we're dividing. Do you remember what we did when we divide? What do we do with exponents? Do we add, do we subtract, do we multiply, or do we distribute, right? Uh, here that there's nothing to distribute, but uh, if you recall, we subtract the exponents. So that's what we're gonna do right now, and uh, which will yield you 27 to the power of one over three, which is equal to cube root 27. And uh, we all know that's three. Okay, all right guys, that is the introduction to lesson 11.2. And we'll do the rest in class. All right guys, that's the end of it. Have a good night, I'll see you in class.